Hello, 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 and welcome back. It is another week here in Wilmington. We're at the Second Glass, obviously, because we're on the Second Glass fa Facebook page, so if we were somewhere else, that would be strange. But nonetheless, we are in the cellar, and it is time for Cellar Chats and the Weekly Flight this week. So having a little fun, maybe too much fun, with a little play on words this week to help keep us warm, which is so fitting because it is chilly today. I'm loving it, to be honest. Um, but we're playing a little play on words with wine names and producers that reference to ways of staying warm or something that makes you think of being warm. So starting out with Argyle, Brut Rose, Brut Rose from Willamette Valley in Oregon. You know, I mean, Argyle is a pattern. It could be on a lot of things. But what do you see Argyle on? Sweaters. Primarily like sweater vests. And there was a day when I rocked a lot of sweater vests. I don't anymore, but I did at one point. And then we're moving into Pui Fume from the Loire Valley, which is 100% Sauvignon Blanc. And Fume refers to the smokiness and also the kind of white bloom that you find on, um, on the grapes around harvest time. There's also tends to be like this really pretty like gunflint kind of characteristic to Sauvignon Blanc from this region. Um, but again, makes me think of being warm and rounding out with the always favorite Cruise Wine Co. Monkey Jacket. Uh, red blend from the north coast of California and a monkey jacket is just that it is a jacket um, It's not for monkeys. It was a jacket referred to um, For that sailors wore back in like the 1800s throughout the San Francisco Bay Area Hence why there's the lovely schooner on the cover of this label. So that being said it is a fun play on words but it's even more fun lineup of wines for us to taste and explore this week for the weekly wine flights. So let's jump into it. Maybe if I can open this bottle. All right, so those of, many of you are probably familiar that this week they hosted, a, this week, earlier this week, they hosted a really great uh, Argyle Sparkling Wine and Oysters event on Sunday here at Second Glass. Um, they had, I believe, the national sales rep manager in town who I met the other day, she's very lovely. So they had a great little event. And we thought we would continue on with that event and feature the sparkling rosé because for me and Celeste, that's probably our favorite. At least, you know, they're all really good, but that one's always a standout for us. So we thought it'd be great to put it on the flights this week and just continue featuring these lovely wines from the Willamette Valley. So this is their 2020 Vintage Brut Rosé. It is, I'm trying to remember, so thankfully it's on the back. Mostly Pinot Noir with some Chardonnay and Pinot Meunier. It's about half, half Pinot Noir and then the rest is grounded out with some Chardonnay, Pinot Meunier. Classic champagne style blend. Look at that color. It is absolutely gorgeous. Mm. Really pretty like white raspberry notes on the nose. A lot of freshness. Great little, great amount of bubbles. Good acidity. Mmm. Yeah, and just a really, ooh, ooh, there's like a, like a punch of like tart, almost slightly under ripe raspberry, which I really like on that. Um, and who doesn't like a good little like bubbly rosé to kick off their, their week, their evening, their day, whatever, what have you, whenever you happen to be in having the flight. Always a good way to start off, you know, some local bubbles. And, and something that, like, I'm sure we'll talk about more as we go into the holiday season and we start getting into the time of the year when everyone drinks bubbles, although we should drink it all the time, but it's, it's for another day, another soapbox. Um, but we all know the truth is that more bubbles are consumed in the last three months of the year as a whole than just about any other time of the year. Um, and it's always a good time to explore, like, more locally made bubbles. I mean, granted, this is from Oregon, not exactly next door, but it's not coming from overseas, you know, and not that I have anything wrong, anything against that, but champagne and things of that nature are getting harder and harder to get a hold of. They become more and more expensive. So it's always fun to explore, you know, things made here domestically that are delicious and with a keen eye towards the old world. And Argyle does a great job. Mm. Again, first wine on this week's lineup, Argyle, their Vintage Brut Rosé. Whew, that is yummy. All right, moving on into Pui Fume. So we're heading off to the Loire Valley. And this is, um, how do I, what would I say? Um, 
So, so many people are very familiar with Sanser, and Sanser is excellent. It has a great reputation for a reason, although much like champagne, like I was just saying, it is becoming harder and harder to get a hold of, and it's becoming more and more expensive. So, what happens when, that, when, when we get to that point? We start exploring things that are nearby or close, close or similar in style. And there are several villages around, around where Sanser is that specialize in Sauvignon Blanc. And Puy Fumé is one of them. Um, and it's, I mean, I really like these wines. There's, you know, there's other villages. There's Mont Louis, which also does great Sauvignon Blanc. And there's another village that my, my brain just stopped working, so I can't remember what it is. But Puy Fumé is arguably the second most famous outside of Sancerre. Um, primarily, we, there was one producer that really put this region on the map, which was Didier Dagenau, which the wines are exceptional and absorbently expensive for a good reason but then you have great producers like this this is francis i'm gonna say blanchett i could be butchering that name i apologize um 100 sauvignon blanc this is from their old vine parcels called v8 which they refer to as va vigne fun fact if you ever say va vigne on any wine bottle it just means old vines um i don't know what the regulations are but i'm typically they're 40 to 50 years or more. Mm. <clears throat> but Puy Fumé, you know, it is Sauvignon Blanc. It's near to um, Sancerre, so you get somewhat similar soils, but you get a little more, like, smokiness. You get a little more clay, I think, in Puy Fumé, so you get a little more depth and texture to the wines, which I kind of like, personally. Um but you still get that like high tone citrus minerality that I think you people look for in Sancerre, but you also get it at a much more reasonable price tag, which goes a long way in my books. To me, it is a little herbaceous, kind of like green, fresh cut grass. Definitely got like that kind of like tinge of like, f you know, flinty, like I wouldn't call it smoky, but it's kind of flinty, like mineral rock kind of character going on. Great little like, Kind of bright, crisp apple characters. Mm. Mm hmm. Woo! Yeah, bright citrus, great acidity. It's not like a, not an overwhelming, like high tone citrus. Again, we are talking Sauvignon Blanc, and so many people either love or really don't like that grapefruit character, and this is not that grapefruit character. So if you are a huge fan of New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs and don't like any others, this is perhaps not for you. And if you're the person who is not so fond of that grapefruit citrus, but you like Sauvignon Blanc, this is your call. Definitely more of those kind of like green, like dried herbs, like fresh greens, combined with like beautiful citrus and mineral. This is a great one. I just want the first two wines. I just want like a giant plate of oysters. That's all I need in my life. Just, just a giant, maybe like a bucket, just a bucket of oysters. Sit here, shuck them, drink these wines, enjoy myself. All right, moving on again, that was Francis Blanchett's their Puy Fume VA Vigne from the Loire Valley. All right. Coming back across the pond, as it were, to California for Cruz Wine Co.'s Monkey Jacket. This is a wine that I think Celeste has had on the menu here since she opened um, and probably was supporting it well before then. Um, she has always been a fan of Michael Cruz, always been a fan of this wine. And I'll be honest, who can blame her? It's a great wine, excellent value. Michael is a standout, standout. <laughs> is a stand-up guy who makes really beautiful wines and is a ton of fun. If you ever get to meet him, he's just super, super smart and always in for a good time. So, so this is sort of his, I guess you would, I wouldn't know, I don't know if I'd call it the flagship wine. Yeah, it is. It's the flagship wine, which is sort of the reverse of, I always think of flagship wines as being the most prestigious and most expensive bottle, particularly in like a winery's portfolio. But then I think there's the reverse where the flagship wine is the wine that 
is out in the market that everybody knows and sort of that the winemaker really wants you to know them for. And Monkey Jacket is, is definitely that wine. This is a very important wine to Michael, not only as a winemaker, but as a business. It's what he makes the most of. It's the one that he can pretty much share with everybody. It's always around 50% Valdecky, which has become like, Michael has become the real OG champion of Valdecky. Now, there's other great producers in California that champion it, but I think Michael does more with it than most. He makes about six different wines from Valdecky um, and Monkey Jacket being his largest production. And then the rest is a blend of other fruits and te- or I think it's usually just fruit that he selects that either he has more of than he needs for a single bottling. Um, sometimes it's Syrah, it's Tanat, Pinot Noir. I've seen, I'm trying to think of other grape varieties that I've seen in there. Petite Syrah on occasion. There may have been some Carignan at one point. So there's always a good healthy helping of Valigy and then kind of a mixed blend on the back end. But the idea is to make this just fresh, easy going, everyday drinking wine that is just as good with like a sit down meal with family as it is with pizza and burgers hanging out with your friends out back. And it does all those things. It's a little reminiscent of like a Cote d'Arone or like kind of a Cote d'Arone meets Gamay. It's a little fresher and brighter than a Cote d'Arone, but it has that kind of gamey pepperiness that I expect to see in like a classic Cote d'Arone. Mm-hmm. Oh, so much structure, depth, kind of pomegranate, again, more raspberry kind of fruit. You've got this pretty, like, I'll call them like soft, easygoing tannins. They're, they're there. They're going to cut through any like grease or fat in like a meal, again, aka burgers, pizza, but they're not so overwhelming that they like just kind of destroy your palate. Such a fun wine. Again, that is Cruise Wine Co.'s Monkey Jacket Red Blend from the North Coast. Um, and these were all 2020 vintage. I didn't plan it that way, but, you know, that's sort of how these things go. What a fun lineup. Super cool wines. Little play on words that's a little silly. Way too much fun. And I'll be honest, I love it. So we had the Argyle Brut Rosé, like an Argyle sweater, just wrapping you up to keep you warm. Some Puy Fume, you got that smoky rocks and that kind of smoky vibe that you're getting when you want to be warm in the wintertime, although it's not quite winter, but it feels like it. And the cruise monkey jacket, because honestly, you do need a jacket today and probably rest of the week. So get out here, have some flights, have some amazing food. Chef is on fire with his menu right now. Um, and again, it continues to be absolutely gorgeous in our little slice of uh, paradise down here in Wilmington. So... Be safe, have fun. I'll see y'all next week.